Um, just that, yeah, um, as the wonderful announcer just said, this meeting is being recorded. So welcome, um, in case you're in the wrong room, this is the marketing committee meeting for July. We're super excited to have all the new people here. And yeah, I guess uh, let's get started. So um, this is the conference info, it's here, um, just in case it gets sent out in the deck and you need it. Um, this call being, is being recorded. And the reason that we're doing that is a request from the committee and also from uh, like also our marketing chairs. And in the future, we're gonna be recording all of our meetings. Um, and this time it actually is being recorded. And like last month, we got all the details sorted out. Um, and we're also gonna be posting all the slides so you can have them in the future. This slide will also stay in the deck um, going forwards. So you can always find the previous recordings and the previous decks. So whenever you wanna refer back to them or have questions, they'll be there for you as a resource. Um, the next call, we meet on the first uh, Wednesday of every single month, which is 8 a.m. Pacific time, which is uh, 1700 uh, CEST, which I can't convert other time zones that fast. So uh, good luck with that. <laughs> um, this is an LF like open meeting. Please don't violate antitrust laws. Um, that'd be bad for everyone involved. I don't think we want uh, 84 people on this call, call sitting right now, sitting in a courtroom. So yeah, don't break the law. Um, with that, the agenda for today is same as always, announcements, events, membership, training, certification, content marketing, PRAR, and our appendix. So kicking it off with announcements, um, I'm super excited because we have a, like, a whole raft of them this month. And starting off, we have Caitlin with the business development uh, meeting at KubeCon North America. Yeah, hello. Thank you, Bill. Um, great to see everyone on the call today. Uh, we've been speaking a little bit internally and um, came up with an idea to offer a member business development and partnerships event at KubeCon. Um, we've heard a lot of feedback from members that you'd really like help from CNCF to facilitate more networking opportunities and introductions to other members to talk potential partnerships or business development opportunities as in the title. Um, so in addition to sort of the opt-in member email list that the co-chairs will talk about a little bit later, um, we felt it would be a really good opportunity to also have a dedicated event where the goal is to develop partnerships. Um, so the idea here is that we'd really love um, your support and volunteers from the marketing committee uh, to help put together some of the programming and coordination of the event. Um, I put some initial thoughts in here around structure, kind of what I was thinking it could look like, um, but I'd be open to feedback and really want some input uh, from the marketing committee and your team members of what would be most valuable for you. So um, I, I do would love to you know some initial raise of hands like yes, Caitlin, great idea, I'm in um, on this call. And then after that, I, I did include a link that hopefully you can get to to sign up and volunteer on the form. Um, so your call to action, I'd love to have your your input and your work um, to work on this event. <laughs> so anybody, the floor is open. What are your initial thoughts? Great question around, will there be an opportunity for virtual participation? Um, yes, that is one of the things we will have to discuss. Um, uh, hopefully in the volunteers would help us coordinate that. We'll also work with the events team of what that could look like. Oh, cool. Thanks for putting the form in the chat, Christy. All right, we're getting some good ideas, feedback. Thank you. All right. All right, cool. So I'm, we're getting some good initial feedback. We're not going to spend a ton of time. Oh, it's locked. Great. Well, I will take the form while we move on to the next announcement, but I'm excited that you are all <laughs> excited to participate. Um, and I'll take note and comment back here in the chat too. Um, so I'll fix the form for you guys to sign up and volunteer, and then uh, we'll probably do a collective call or take some feedback off offline. 
Cool. Thank yeah. You. And um, thanks for everybody for like, feel free if you want to like come on camera or not, like say something or just write it in the chat, like open to any forms of feedback. I'm sure if you message even Caitlin in Slack after the meeting, she'd also be open to your feedback too, um, or sign up on the forum. So yeah. exciting things. KubeCon is right around the corner. I get to meet and greet. Um, yeah. So with that, I'll hand it over to some stunning pictures and uh, Charlie, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, hello, hello everyone. I Well, I'm actually doing this because I'm also brand new to, to CNCF and it's fantastic to meet so many new folks on this call. I feel like I'm in really good company. Um, so yes, hello, I'm Charlie. I'm calling you all from Croatia right now, hence like the, the wet hair, I'm on holiday. So um, <laughs> I've popped back to my little Airbnb to do this. Um, so I live very close to Bill, actually. I'm in Potsdam, uh, very near to Berlin. You can see that in the bottom right-hand corner um, is one of the lovely schlosses uh, or castles we have there. So the reason I'm saying hello is I recently joined CNCF to manage content strategies. So basically, content for me means anything that is talking to the great successes. Um, of cloud native technologies. So whether it's case studies, whether it's spotlights, whether it's FIPI and friends, I want you to think of me as someone who, who helps folks basically who consume or contribute cloud native projects to tell their fantastic stories and to encourage more people, um, you know, to basically come and join us in the cloud native world. Um, a little background on me. So I'm a, a former frontline journalist for my sins. Um, I used to work for Fairfax Media um, out in Asia Pacific when, uh, when that was still a thing. Gosh, that's showing my age. Um, and for the last, gosh, wow, I think it's almost a decade now. Um, I've been working in tech, first in ag tech. Um, but once I got to Berlin around three years ago, um, I moved to cloud native technologies. So I absolutely love working in the tech world. I find it entirely fascinating um, to see what people are building, to see what people are doing and the successes that people happen or have happened. Um, when I'm not deep, like knee deep in GitHub and prose, because I love writing, um, I'm knee deep in mud. I absolutely love running. I love running in the mountains and by the lakes, anything you can imagine. Um, all my details are also on that last slide. So you can reach out and get in touch with me in a number of ways. Um, I'm in the same time zone as Bill and actually a lot of you I saw from the chat. Um, my email's there, my Slack's there I'm on the CNCF um, Slack. And you can also book a meeting with me at any time on my calendar. Um, and with that, I actually wanted to give you a couple of updates um, that we've made to a few programs since I arrived. So if we go to the next slide, please. So we have made a couple of improvements uh, to case studies uh, that you may have may not seen. So we run, a, I'd say a pretty traditional case study program. Um, so we have printed case studies, they're available on the website. Everything looks very nice and fancy, but we wanted to draw more attention. Um, to the fantastic stories um, that our end users are creating and producing. So we've designed a brand new case study landing page, and this is really highlighting the impact of cloud native projects. When you go on to it, you'll actually see that in every little card now, we've got some kind of metric, some kind of statistic that talks to the business benefit of cloud native technologies. We've also introduced uh, what I'd like to call the hero call to action um, on the main CNCF landing page. So when you go on there now, you might see this kind of this changing little bar on the right hand side. So right now here in the pitch, you can see it's Orlando, but we have a couple of different case studies that are rotating through. The idea is that every new case study is going to go on the front page. This is really fantastic. You know, I just went and had a, a quick look at the stats. These are driving more than 500 readers a month to featured case studies. So if you want to be featured on the front page, please uh, talk to us about case studies. We've also implemented a fresh case study layout. So now when you click right through into a case study, you'll see that they're super easy to scan. Um, basically, what we want to do is make sure that Google is picking these up for you um, so that when say folks are searching for your company and what you're doing, these are actually being picked up and ranking highly. We also want folks who are part of CNCF to be able to quickly scan and see what projects you're using, um, what kind of cloud you're using. So folks who are facing the same challenges as you can learn from what you've been doing. Um, and if you could move to the next slide, please. 
I wanted to give you a quick update too on case study readership. So uh, this was only to June uh, 20th. I can sort of update these for you um, each meeting if this will be of interest. But our analytics have held pretty strong this year to date. We have more than 20,000 new page views overall. Um, you can actually see a, a really big spike um, at the bottom there. This was actually on March 6th and represents 1,008 views of Fidelity's case study. So this was first published on March 4th and they promoted it really heavily on their own channel. So I think that, that kind of really shows the, the power of getting the news out to your own network as well. Um, just one more thing is that we have an average of over two minutes uh, eyes on each page, which is really fantastic. This does show that folks are coming, they're reading your case studies end to end. Um, I'm having a, a little trouble in figuring out exactly what folks are doing afterwards. So one thing we're looking at at the moment is basically considering putting in some calls to action at the end of case studies so we can trace what are people doing? Are they going and reading more case studies or are they going elsewhere? Um, I can say if anyone has any sort of ideas on things they'd like to, to see on that, feel free to contact me or drop something in the chat. Um, could you move to the next slide, please? Perfect. So this kind of brings us more to where we're at. And this is one of the big reasons that I wanted to talk to you all. So since the CNCF began and the end user case study program started in 2017, we work with more than 100 end user organizations. We've published 87 case studies, which is fantastic. Um, we have a number that are just waiting approval, sort of at the, the last gate, um, and a couple waiting end user feedback. So you can, you can see the pipeline is pretty big, what we're working with. Um, and I'm kind of getting um, to the point where we have such a big pipeline. I'm getting concerned that the community is going to start losing out because we can't manage everything traditionally end to end here. We are a small organization. And that's why I want to talk to you more about different forms of storytelling. And I'm really, really interested in your opinions. You don't have to sort of shout my here if you're not comfortable. You can reach me on email, you can reach me on Slack, um, and we can also use the chat or just sort of raise your hand function. But if you could go to the next slide, I've got a couple of questions for you all. So first question, how many of you have actually completed an end user case study with CNCF? I'm really interested if you could raise your hands and we can, can see if anyone here has Hey, Charlie, this is Christy. I actually have this set up in a poll. Do you want me to kick off the poll? Oh, yes. Could you, Christy? That would be amazing. Yep. One second. All right. Now you oh. can walk through the questions if you'd like. <laughs> Go for it. Have you completed an end user case study? Yes or no? And obviously the, the follow-up is, do you plan to? Have you got any plans to, to work with us on talking about you know, the fantastic things that either you, if you're an end user, or perhaps your customers, um, if you're a member and you're supplying them with cloud native technology. One of the things I'm really interested to learn from you is if you'd be open to new storytelling formats um, that diverge from this kind of traditional and fairly heavy lifting of a, a case study. So we have the fantastic end user lounge. Would you be interested in doing interviews in the end user lounge? And here at CNCF, us producing interesting blogs, interesting case studies based on the transcripts, which would be, I think, a lot less work for all the folks involved, particularly on the end user side. Um, would you like to leverage our online programs more? Would you like to be doing interesting webinars um, actually based on, on the interesting case studies that you're doing? And the last question I've got is, would you be interested even in submitting case studies from your own businesses, um, obviously with some editorial support from CNCF to make sure that you know we're using the same language. Um, I actually have a really great example of this um, recently. So Catherine, I, I'm not sure if she's on, on the call or not from Buoyant, um, submitted some really fantastic case studies um, and one from Elkjop, which is one of the, the biggest retailers in the Nordics. Um, oh, hi Catherine. <laughs> um, basically, from submitting it to publishing it end to end was six weeks. Um, and that is now on the front page of the CNCF website um, as one of those rotating case studies. 
So if anyone would be interested in doing that in kind of using CNCF to sort of widen your marketing of your own case studies, I would love to hear from you. Um, did any, I'm just gonna check the chat and see if anyone sort of had any, any ideas there. Oh, actually, yeah, fair enough. I mean, Rob has, uh, uh, sorry, Rob, for, for calling you out, has, has just said, you know, could we consider a not sure option? Um, absolutely. I've realized that some of you are working for big organizations and it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you in terms of doing case studies. Um, you have a lot of different things to consider, you know, not least the, uh, the legal department. So please don't feel here like you have to uh, have to respond perfectly. Did anyone have any ideas they were just happy to, to share with the group now? Nope, I hear happy silence. So I'll just have a, a quick read of, a, of the polls to you all. So actually most folks here haven't done an end user case study, that's 85%. Um, but almost 80% of you plan to. Um, which is really fantastic. This is music to my ears and we are here to help you tell these stories and to get them out to a wide audience. 91% um, of you are completely open to the new formats, which is brilliant. Um, and also 91% of you would be happy to submit your own case studies, which is really, really fantastic. Um, I think what we'll do is I will come and like present um, at the next marketing committee meeting and we can actually start forming some of these into more programs for you all to benefit from. Um, I can just see, can we get view access to Google Analytics? Actually, that is something that Christy and I are working on um, and hopefully we'll be able to update you in our next meeting about ways that you can access our analytics at any time. Um, so with that said, I will hand it back to, um, to Bill and Christy. It's really fantastic to, to meet all of you and um, please uh, don't hesitate to drop me a line at any time. Cool. Thanks, Charlie. And uh, I hope you can go back to enjoying your vacation on the beach now. I'm definitely very <laughs> um, Yeah. Um, and thanks for the suggestion. Yeah. So we will follow up on that about getting access and yeah, um, we'll let you know. So, uh, oops. Sorry, Charlie, I missed two things. Um, so a quick update on the uh, co-chair initiatives. Um, I don't know, like Caitlin and Lexi, do you wanna uh, kind of talk about this or do you want me to, like up to you? Yeah, I'm happy to go through it. Cool. Awesome, so yeah, so last time we gave everyone an update on um, what the top initiatives we are going to be focusing on this year as co-chairs are based off of the survey feedback um, that everyone on the committee had provided. So I'm really excited to provide an update today on where we are at in some of those initiatives um, and a huge thanks to Bill and Christy for helping make a lot of this happen. Um, we have officially gotten the recordings and um, slides will now be available to you going forward. So there is a um, folder here where you can access all of that um, as well as the private recordings on YouTube. Um, we have also put together the uh, events and CFP calendar. So there is now this event spreadsheet where you can add your event upcoming CFPs if you're looking for speakers, um, a really great way to get more awareness, partnerships and speakers to your events, um, as well as the opt-in member email list. Um, so this is basically a collection of emails you can go add yourself if you are interested in networking, partnership opportunities. I know we have a lot of new folks on this call. This would be a really great way to get the lay of the land um, of folks you can reach out to. So um, with these two, as I mentioned, it is completely optional. It is for you to add your information to. Um, we ask that, you know, if you move on to another company, if things change, please keep that, help us keep that updated in the spreadsheet. Um, and then we do just ask everyone to be respectful of reaching out, um, you know, not using this as like a sales lead list, um, anything like that. Um, we have also started talking about this monthly topic roundtable discussion. So the idea is that once a month we would go through um, kind of a brainstorm slash best practices sharing on things like meetup, social media, whatever you want. Um, so I did have one question here. I think Christy just launched this poll. Um, but I wanted to ask, would you rather have this monthly roundtable at the end of this meeting 
or do a separate like hour long session um, another time during the month. So if you could respond to that and give a little bit of an idea um, of what you would prefer, that would be super helpful for us to start scheduling this. And then just as you're doing that, um, we will also have kind of an open call for topics every month. So if there are any that you're particularly interested in being for this first monthly roundtable, feel free to drop those in the chat as well. Just wait one more second for people to respond and then I'll close the poll. Awesome. Oh, pretty split. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll chat a little bit more about this then. Maybe one of the things we could do is, you know, for topics that are maybe a little bit shorter in discussion, we could do them at the end of this meeting if it's going to be a shorter meeting. Um, otherwise, we'll get something standing um, at another time during the month. All right. Um, then we have also uh, a big request was to kind of have the LF events team go over some hybrid event guidelines and best practices. I know we're all trying to navigate this new world. Um, and this is actually going to be a couple slides later today. Um, so thanks Vanessa and team for putting that together. Um, and then the other two things we have on here is there will be an event centered meeting after KubeCon. Um, Bill, I don't know, I don't think Lexi's on, but did you have any more information on, on that one that you wanna share? Uh, we're just going to kind of like in the lead up to the event and like afterwards, like get, uh, get like a preview and like, uh, feedback about it, um, from the events team and making sure that like everything we have an opportunity so that the committee feels informed, um, about, uh, KubeCon completely. So. And then the final one that we've kind of taken as a you know, personal project on is to improve some of the documentation around the purpose of the committee, the roles and responsibilities of us as chairs and the CNCF marketing team and our yearly goals, just to improve that transparency and then create a really smooth process for future chairs coming into this role as well. Um, so yeah, so that's it. That's the updates from uh, the co-chair side of things. Um, you know, hopefully, um, you all can participate in some of these programs and looking forward to sharing more uh, going forward. Cool, well, thanks, Caitlin. Um, I guess before we move on, does, I think this is really exciting work. I, I'm really seeing a lot more energy like around the committee, a lot of these great initiatives coming out. So thank you to Lexi and Kate and Lynn for like driving this forward. Um, does anybody have any like questions um, about these initiatives or want to, um, chat otherwise we'll keep rolling because it's it's yeah there's just a lot of like things coming out like uh and uh, the last thing is so the cfp for the business value track at kubecon cloud native con north america is now open um it would be great if you could submit a talk um i'm really excited about this um track and i think it's going to continue to grow and grow especially as we try to like tell the bigger story about cloud native you know if, if we can tell the story of cloud native and how it impacts the business outside just the it department i think that's when really cloud native will really hit the uh inflection curve when we can say and this is the impact it has on the bottom line so i'm super excited about this and i highly encourage you to submit to the cfp uh next we're on to the events. And with that, I'll hand it over to Vanessa and the events team to talk about kind of their experience putting together KubeCon and some of what they've learned so far about hybrid event best practices. Thanks, Bill. Hey, everybody. Um, hope everyone is having a good summer so far. Um, as Caitlin has mentioned, I know everybody's trying to navigate this new world of hybrid event, um, hybrid events. So we've put together um, a short list of some best practices. Um, the first one here is communication is key. Everybody, as you know, and I'm sure you're experiencing, everybody is looking for um, you know, information. What is the event going to look like? Um, so uh, the approach we've taken is to um, provide regular updates on our safety protocols and requirements. Um, we recommend having one location where information 
uh, is kept and is updated and that you link out to that page every well, everywhere else. So you are keeping information um, updated and consistent at the same time. So, um, you know, there's lots of points of communication, you're always directing back to that same page. Um, and for QCon North America, we have a health and safety page. Um, hopefully everybody has uh, seen that uh, page. I can share a link with it in just a moment, um, but that is where we will be keeping all of our, um, or providing all of our updates. Um, the second one here is uh, just to follow the CDC, the WHO and local health and safety protocols and guidelines. Um, <clears throat> as we've seen the last year and a half, things can change quickly. So it's important to stay connected to um, you know, your, your venue contacts. Um, they are, um, I'm sure, in touch with their uh, local health boards and um, should, be, should be able to provide you with, um, with updates and what their you know, recommendations and protocols are. Um, the next one here is to evaluate, excuse me, evaluate meeting room capacities. Um, you know, take a look at the space that you're working with. Consider putting in wider aisleways for entrance and exits, uh, perhaps some additional spacing between rows, uh, general reduced capacity in meeting rooms. Um, again, these are just things to take into consideration just based on the size and scope of your event. Um, also evaluate cleaning protocols. Um, I would, uh, we recommend checking in with the venue what their standard protocols are. Um, if they recommend uh, any enhanced cleaning, again, due to local um, you know, health ordinances or guidelines um, and having hand sanitizer readily available throughout the event. Uh, next item is um, about your ticket options. With a hybrid event, you're more than likely going to have, um, you know, more than one ticket option. You'll have an in-person ticket and a virtual ticket, and uh, it's important to provide specific details on what's included between the two, two tickets. Next slide, please. Um, microphones, podiums, clickers, and any other high-touch equipment, we recommend that they're sanitized uh, between speakers um, and uh, other high-touch equipment, you know, have frequent cleaning as well. Um, something else to think about, uh, your internet needs may change based on your hybrid components, depending on what you're streaming. Um, so that's just a kind of a new area of focus. Um, food and beverage service. Our recommendation is to do more of a cafeteria style grab and go. Um, this makes for, um, you know, line movement to, to move through more quickly, um, less touch points, things like that. And recommendation also is to have all of your service staff wearing masks and gloves. Uh, whenever possible, provide outdoor space um, or open your windows and doors during meal times. Um, just to allow people to you know, get outside, have the fresh air, uh, re allow some recirculation of air into spaces, et cetera. Um, also, when you're thinking about your um, lounge or networking areas, um, if you can you know, make those bigger spaces, allow for individual seating, spread things out so um, attendees can still interact and have conversations, but also um, you know, being able to maintain some type of physical distance. Um, so maybe not having sofas where two or three people could sit together, but um, you know, single, single chairs, um, maybe having you know, half of the um, stools at a, high, at a high table instead of you know, maxing it out to full capacity. Um, and the last thing here, which is really, really important, is not to discount your virtual audience. Keep the engagement going and keep them connected. There is, there is still value. Um, there is great value in that virtual audience. And there are still you know, quite a lot of people that might not be able to travel to an event um, for one reason or another. So um, it's still important to engage with that audience. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you Anybody so much. Do have any questions? Hey, Vanessa, this is Gary. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Gary? Oh, I just realized I wasn't on video. I apologize. 
<laughs> um, well, I, I apologize that I am on video. So, you know, it, it worked, it works both ways. Um, just, a, a, you know, thank you for all the information. I know we're all going to be trying to figure this out together. I did this little Venn diagram for my team the other day that was Cisco rules, venue rules, CNCF rules, and somewhere right there in that small area in between are the things we're going to be able to do at KubeCon. Um, this is all great guidance to start. Are you, is CNCF going to actually have, I don't know, what's the best way to put it, any say on what actually goes on in the individual booth spaces? You can have a theater, you can't have a theater, or is it just basic common sense and we're just, you know, we're, we're jumping into planning next week and I just wanted to see sort of Obviously, all these things are great starting points, but how much deeper this is going to go? Yeah, um, I can let Tina jump in here, but I know that um, <laughs> there's, uh, I know the sponsor portal is going to be coming out soon, and there's some best practices and guidelines okay. coming in there. Um, I think Tina's on the call. Tina, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that, but um, we, we will be sharing some more information. Okay, perfect. That is right, Gary. Um, look for an email from us within the next few days. Uh, okay. We're ready to send our sponsor portal out and share it with all the sponsors. And we'll have a ton of information. <laughs> I'm sure navigating this is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, and always I, a I lot think of fun. I think one other thing, um, you know, to remember if it's one thing we've learned in the last year is that, you know, things are changing on a daily basis still. And it's a reminder just to be, you know, patience, you know, have patience and flexibility and, you know, not just with each other, but understanding from like the venues perspective that, you know, they're getting guidance from state and local, you know, people and, um, and, you know, just, we know that things can change. We've experienced that. So just remember to be, you know, flexible and, and, and patient. <clears throat> and we're all in it together. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, thank you, Vanessa. Thanks, Bill. Um, Bill, I know you're gonna do the next few slides here, but I just wanna, um, point out uh, one item that's on the next slide, you can go, um, if you can move to the next one, Chris, thank you. Uh, the last item here, I just wanted to highlight, we do have our sponsor hosted in-person co-located event packages are now open. Um, we haven't had uh, um, these packages in the last uh, you know year due to the virtual um, only events, but um, we're able to bring them back in Los Angeles. I know they've been popular, so I just wanna make sure everybody um, has seen that uh, these are now available um, and you can click on the link here to get more information. We have three package types, um, all based on uh, you know, venue capacity or room size capacities. And then I'll let you take it, Bill. Great, uh, thank you, Vanessa. Um, I think uh, as you can see, there's a lot of great prep work the events team is putting into KubeCon. They're preparing for lots of different eventualities. And I, I think we're, we and the event are in very good hands. Um, if you have any questions, I'm sure they're very happy and very prepared to help you answer them. Um, that being said, uh, I'm super excited for people to come to KubeCon Cloud Native Con. In case you forgot, the dates are October 11th to 15th in Los Angeles and virtual, um, both equally um, important. Um, registration is now open and standard pricing will end August 15th. Um, so buy those tickets be be um, be before that date. Um, as Vanessa was saying, the health and safety uh, guidelines are always gonna be updated on the website. Um, you can check the details at the link there. The CFP is closed except for the business value uh, tracks. You still can submit to that, um, but announcements are gonna be sent out August 2nd and the full schedule will be announced um, after that, um, there are still sponsorships available. So, and with that, thank you to 
all of our sponsors so far of KubeCon Cloud NativeCon North America, including our diamond sponsors, Cisco, Google Cloud, Cast and by Beam, Microsoft Azure, Red Hat, and VMware. Um, alongside that, um, similar to what Vanessa was saying about the sponsored co-located events, uh, CNCF is also hosting a whole range of uh, co-located events, uh, which are on the two days preceding the actual main conference, Monday the 10th and Tuesday the 11th. Personally, I'm super excited about these and it's really hard for me to choose um, what I want to go to because there's so many exciting topics. I think this is where you really see the exciting new technologies and things coming up. So if nothing else, go and try to, you know, like learn something new um, at one of these co-located events. So there's EVPF day, um, there's gonna be EnvoyCon, there's a uh, production identity day with Spiffy Inspire. There's PromCon for Prometheus. There's Supply Chain Security Con, which if you haven't been following news is like really uh, a hot topic right now with the new executive order um, and with the like a whole bunch of uh, ransomware attacks. We don't have favorites here at CNCF, but like this one is my favorite. Um, <laughs> so hopefully I'll see you at least at one of the co-located events. Um, there's also Cloud Native Security Conference, GitOpsCon North America, DevX Day, Cloud Native Wasm Day, um, FluentCon and Kubernetes AI Day, and Service MeshCon. So as you can see, there's a whole host of co-located events covering a wide range of topics that I think will be at least interesting to uh, at least one person in your company. So I'd highly encourage you um, to is sign up um, for a co-located event or look into sponsoring one that's in your company's area of interest. Um, besides that, there's also KubeCon, Cloud NativeCon, uh, plus Open Source Summit China uh, 2021 coming up. This event will be completely virtual um, because of the different restrictions um, that were going on. Like obviously the events team is once again, very experienced with running virtual events. I think this is gonna be another awesome event. The dates are December 9th and 10th. The CFP is still open. So if you miss the ones for North America, you can still submit to uh, KubeCon Cloud Native Con China. Um, and Open Source Summit also has a um, separate CFP going to the, um, Sponsor options and registration is going to be available very soon. Um, and thank you to our sponsors that have already signed up. So Who Have I Cloud, VMware, Canonical, Chronosphere, and Stream Native. So a little bit um, updates on the events that will be uh, upcoming. There's SodaCon where um, I'll actually be speaking like a uh, very shameless plug for myself. Uh, Grace HopperCon, OSS, Open Source Summit, um, uh, Monktoberfest, Google Cloud Next, J4K Conference, the LF Member Summit, Supercomputing, Open Source Summit Japan, and AWS reInvent. Um, with that, we come to our last part. There's the Kubernetes Community Days, which um, are now live on six different continents. This past month, um, we had two, I would say, really awesome events. Uh, there was KCD Spain, which had 876 attendees. It was three days of content fully in Spanish. Um, I think a really great resource going forwards for the Spanish speaking cloud native community. There's also KCD Bangalore, uh, which actually had almost 1700 attendees um, and a really great way to kick it off for um, the Indian community. Um, coming up, uh, there's KCD Brazil and KCD Brazil University um, happening and uh, KCD UK and KCD uh, Korea coming up in September. And just a reminder, you can, if you're interested in doing this, um, I help organize um, the event. So I'm super happy to chat about this. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Always happy to hear about more exciting uh, KCD events coming up. Um, with that, welcome to our new members. I know we were talking about all the new people on the call today but uh, welcome to everybody that has joined um, in the last month. Uh, it's exciting to have you joining us. CNCF membership is growing, it seems, almost daily. Um, and it's always exciting to have more people. Oops. Um, in terms of acquisitions, we missed a couple in the last month. Um, so shout out to Kinvolk that got acquired by Microsoft, Turbonomic that got acquired by IBM, Lights that getting acquired by ServiceNow and Sensu being uh, acquired by Sumo Logic. With that, um, we'll move on to training and certification. Um, 
And so we've had some great ideas from the KTBM members about how we can help make the Kubernetes uh, training partners more visible for everyone. Um, so the first thing, we'd love to have more contributed blogs uh, from our KTP partners. Um, and just a reminder um, that KTPs are CNCF members and they can submit to the CNCF blog at any point. We're also gonna be adding a new tag to the blog to encourage more training content, uh, which is a CNCF training partner blog post. Um, the next one is we're looking to update and improve our training page on the CNCF uh, homepage. And Stephanie William uh, has uh, amazingly raised her hand to help um, lead kind of an update for an FAQ for that page. Um, so please reach out to her if you'd like to help her with that project. This will be highlighting, you know, commonly asked questions or how we, the KTPs would like to guide people through uh, their training information um, journey. There's also been a request for improved search uh, for KTPs on the CNCF website or the landscape. Um, we're also looking for a volunteer to open an issue on the landscape. Um, what would you like to see if you're a KTP? What would you like to see um, on a searchable page? How would you like people to be able to find you? Um, I link to opening a page in the landscape and what information you'd like to have um, there. And this is also a reminder for the KTPs. Uh, the CFPs are open. We'd love to have more content around training and certification at all of our KubeCon Cloud Native Con events. Uh, the China event CFP is open. Uh, EU is going to be opening very soon. Um, and then pretty soon we'll be right back in the cycle for North America. Um, and I, I think this is something that has kind of been a little bit overlooked in past KubeCons. And I think it would be a um, great thing to have more KTPs to step up and submit around that too. Um, beyond that, um, our Training and enrollments always continue to increase. Introduction to Kubernetes is already over uh, 200,000 enrollees. Um, our courses are going to be continued to update to Kubernetes 1.21, um, and all our courses are gaining more enrollees. Um, there's currently almost 60,000 exam registrants for the CKA. Um, they're going to be updating the exam to Kubernetes 1.21 as of June 9th. Um, we also have an exams in Chinese and Japanese, um, and the full curriculum is published on the curriculum uh, websites. Next, um, the Kubernetes security specialist is continuing to grow um, with uh, 7,000 registrants. Um, I think we currently have about 700 uh, people that are now certified. Um, and this is gonna be updated to Kubernetes 1.21 very soon uh, with a, an exam in Japanese coming in late July. CKAD is also at around 30,000, also gonna be updated. And um, there's also an exam in Japanese. So with that, I'll hand it over to Christy for content marketing. Awesome. Now you can take a breath, Bill, and uh, get a drink Thanks. of water. That was a marathon. <laughs> hey, everyone. Christy here from uh, the marketing team. Uh, we're going to walk through a couple content marketing things, as Bill mentioned. So first up here is our online programs. Um, uh, great to see the momentum continue to grow with our live streams, as well as our on-demand webinars. You can see that um, we've got really great views on that end. Um, a reminder that the calendar is open for Q3. So if you haven't um, had a chance to take advantage of your online program opportunities, uh, feel free to use the Calendly at the bottom link here. Um, also, if you have any questions about eligibility content, you wanna get involved, uh, feel free to shoot us an email at the alias and we'd be happy to get you uh, set up. And on to the next uh, slide, please. And here's a quick look at the CNCF blog. Uh, you can see the top five blogs from June on the side here, as well as our views and growth. Next slide. And then here's a quick look at Cube Weekly. Uh, Cube Weekly is still going strong. Uh, we did see a slight dip in, um, in our subscriber list as we moved from MailChimp to HubSpot. So you can see the graph reflects that. But um, also, again, if you'd love to, or if you'd like to submit content to Cube Weekly, that's our weekly Kubernetes uh, digest. It's put together by us here at CNCF, as well as our group of editors. We'd love to have you contribute content. Um, there's information on what content uh, is mostly technical is appropriate, as well as how to uh, submit 
um, and then details on how to subscribe so you can keep in the loop there. And on to the next slide. And I think I'll pass it to Jesse or Chad if you're on to talk about ARBR. Yeah, it'll be Jesse. Hey. Hey, Jesse. Um, hi. So we had actually a ton of really great coverage um, in June. Um, I listed two of the feature articles that we have. Um, this one's a really great article highlighting the work and contributions of the CNCF community to re remove um, racist terminology from code. Um, definitely worth a read. Uh, Celeste uh, is highlighted in the beginning. Um, let's move to the next one. Uh, this next article um, is InfoWorld. So we'd actually worked on this during KubeCon and it published. Um, it just does a really great job um, talking about uh, the cloud and CNCF and the cloud native community. Um, so that's also definitely worth a read. And then we also, next slide, announced the new technology radar, and in case anybody missed that, um, on multi-cluster management. Got a lot of really good um, media interest. Uh, actually, in the TFIR interview with Cheryl just posted today, so that's great. Um, we also have an upcoming Software Engineering Daily podcast um, about this as well. So the tech, tech readers um, definitely still get a lot of um, interest from media. I think they're really, it's really interesting content. So we're really pleased about that. Um, for the next one, we also um, are doing a bunch of micro surveys, which you have maybe seen. Um, we do a lot of twi Twitter, Twitter um, stuff around that, but we, we came out with our FinOps for Kubernetes micro survey. Uh, this actually I didn't include a link to it. Um, should, you can find it on our website, um, on the blog. Um, but we came out with this on, on the, at the end of the month, um, got a really great uh, article in Business Insider, which is a great read. We, we, they talked with, um, with Chris and the um, JR from FinOps Foundation. Um, we have a couple more upcoming um, micro surveys also. So these are some of the speaking opportunities that Priyanka has coming up. And um, I will let Carl go over the analyst relations um, slides. I think there's about three of them. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Um, so my name's Carl Wright. I'm part of the analyst relations team for CMCF. And uh, Trisha Cooper and I, who's also on the team, uh, recently put together this quarter, quarterly deck. Um, and the reason we track analysts uh, <clears throat> analyst is to see at what, they, uh, what content they could be creating that you guys can put into your marketing funnels. Um, so to help with demand generation, and then they also speak to potential buyers. So it's important to get ahead of that and see what's trending um, on the analyst side of things. Um, so this new quarter two report that just came out, um, what's just a quick summary of what's in it is we have uh, three months of research highlights. So just top, um, top reports that have been coming out in around this industry, as well as analyst landscape. So that's... Um, key names, um, that's a great place to find, um, update your list of analysts, find new analysts, um, and then just kind of get a short list of uh, big names in the industry. And then of course, we've got quotes as well, some helpful quotes um, that we've pulled out from relevant research. Um, some of the key takeaways from this quarter, um, one of the main ones has been how business focused analysts are um, changing or, or adapting and how much how business focused their research is so um case studies are very big right now and then um they're also showing a lot of inter interest in the business value track at kubecon the upcoming kubecon so that's that's the main, that's one of the first things and then um we're also seeing some broader coverage um and citations of cncf assets and surveys inside of research um so some of those micro surveys uh, are popping up inside of, um, of um, analyst research. And then of course, when they pop up in that research, that sends leaks ba links back to CNCF, um, which is just great at widening that web. And then the last, last thing that I wanted to highlight for you guys was that cloud, cloud native as a whole is just continuing to grow as a category. Um, Forrester is um, now adding some cloud, um, cloud native specific analysts. And then 451 has an excellent center on cloud native as well. Um, and then the next few slides are just a few of the, uh, a few of the um, pieces of research that we pulled out. And I'll just let you guys cruise through on that on your own time. Um, 
but yeah, that's, that's what we've got. We've got going on on the AR side of things. Um, and I hope you enjoy that report because there's quite a bit in there. So go ahead and check it out. Well, oh, thanks, Carl. Um, and then as per uh, always, we just have um, some of the key messages that are popping out um, in the coverage in the last month. Um, I think we are, we're basically seeing security edge storage, um, AI kind of server list. Those are kind of all the ones at the top um, every month. So that's, that's not a big change. And then um, the next two slides are ones that this is graduated projects. And then the next one is incubating projects, which you guys can check out um, and see that that's, that tends to, I've noticed that like fluctuates um, quite a bit actually each month, just depending on any, any um, announcements that come out on releases and stuff like that. So. Thanks. Paul. Cool, thank you. Um, and then the last thing, I'd like to mention in the meeting is that we've slightly reorganized the appendix. Um, we thought that the appendix was getting um, slightly too long. In fact, almost like made the deck twice as long as it was. So we've slightly shortened it. Um, there was a comment earlier from Jonathan um, about where can we find the slides and the recordings. The links to that um, are both in here and I posted the link to this specific slide deck. Um, also in the chat, you'll always be able to find the links to both of them um, at the end of the slide deck here. Also the opt-in cloud native events and CFP calendar, the spreadsheet is there and the member email contact list is also there. If you wanna add the, your events or uh, contact e details, this will be at the end of every slide deck. The next thing is the member resources. If you're wondering how to get involved in different things, where to find resources, um, the best way is this top link in the member welcome deck. It'll explain to you how to get involved in different programs like uh, webinars, blogs, um, the social media. If you're looking for ways to get involved, um, that's your best resource for that. On top of that, um, we also have a link to the building your brand session with CNCF um, that offers, that walks you through actually how to use each of these programs. And there's a link to the slide um, and the recording of each of those um, there. And that will give you kind of the intro um, into it. So for all the new people that are joining on this call, I highly encourage you to either check out the member welcome deck or the building your brand session with CNCF to understand how you can really uh, leverage all the programs that CNCF offers to you through your membership. And with that, um, thank you. Um, I know we probably have about four minutes left. I'm super happy to stay over if other people have any other questions, things that they would like to talk about. If any of the new members have questions about how to use um, programs, like we're super happy to stay on as a CNCF staff. If you're not staff, like please feel free to drop off if you have other things to do. Um, but yeah, like we're here for you as a resource and thanks everyone for coming today. Thank you to you too. Hey Bill. Hey Bill, I have a question for you. With, sure. Because we always run into this problem with KubeCon and the days. Are we now referring to October 11th as day minus one? We've got day zero. I'll let the events team take that one. <laughs> <laughs> Are they? Some from the events team still here. Are they hanging me out to dry? <laughs> I need you out to dry, Bill. I was going to ask a few questions oh, of them, no. but I think they all jumped. Uh, yeah. So. They, they knew Gary was asking questions. They're like, yeah, oh, exactly. better. We're, we're out of here. We're out of here. Out of here. Yeah. Uh, hey, Gary, I'm still here. I can answer your question. This is Tina. Okay. <laughs> I can. <laughs> Hey, we we are not referring to October 11th and 12th as day zero or day negative Minus one. one. <laughs> yes. So um, if you take a look at the website, uh, we've designated October 11th and 12th as uh, pre-event programming days to differentiate them from the main conference, conference. days, which are October 13th through the 15th. Yeah. Those are the days when the keynotes will be happening, breakout sessions, all that stuff. And October 11th and 12th is mostly just the co-located events that are happening yeah. before KubeCon, Cloud Native Con. Yeah. Yeah. I saw someone starting to use day minus one 
at the virtual EU event. And I'm like, oh my God, how this could really go. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so, well, okay. I'm thinking about a, a minus two day event because there's so many things that the CNCF is sponsoring <laughs> on the two other days yeah. that it's really kind of getting to be a mishmash, trying to get eyeballs um, and attendees for yeah. things that were uh, that like the commons thing that I try and host each one. The, the thing that I posted in the uh, the chat would be really helpful. I, I, I realized everything was crazy for the hybrid one we're coming up with, but for the next KubeCon, if the sponsored co-located events could get announced at the same time as the CNCF ones, um, that would be very helpful because for planning, people um, are trying to decide what events they're gonna go to and hit their book their travel and everything. And if all the co-located events are not there, uh, then it makes it um, difficult for people to make those decisions. Um, and, you know, they probably are going to prioritize the CNCF events, sponsored events, because those are what they would click through to register on as the registration opens. So it, it would be nice if everything was in sync for, um, I don't know, KubeCon EU in hopefully in 2022. My God, 2020. <laughs> yeah, that sounds so bizarre. But yeah, yeah. that's that's the one thing. Um, and thank you. We're we're working through with you guys on our co-located event for Commons and finding a venue and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but it really would be nice. Thanks, Tyron. Yeah, I think we'll definitely um, take that feedback um, back to the team and see what we can do for um, the next KubeCon. Um, there's also a question from Lynette. Uh, the solution showcase, meaning the booths, is not open on Tuesday, only Wednesday through Friday. Uh, Tina, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, that's correct. It's only open Wednesday to Friday. Yes, the on site showcase is only open during the main conference days. Wednesday and Friday, Tuesday will still be a setup day. And is it full day long things or is it, are they limited hours? No, it's full day. Okay, just for awareness. Are we having a mixer Tuesday night? Or Wednesday night? On Wednesday night, yes. At the moment, we are planning for a welcome reception and booth call awesome. on the first night. Okay. Um, yeah. oh, I will, on a serious note, Tina, if any more, I, I know the meeting room MPO sold out. Um, and I feel like an idiot for not looking at the diamond sponsor deliverables and seeing that a meeting room wasn't part of the package this time. Um, any, are there any, I mean, we're looking at options like at the JW Marriott for a meeting room, but if any additional meeting rooms open up at the, is there, well, let's put it this way. Is there a possibility of any additional meeting room MPOs opening up at the venue? That MPO is really popular, yes. So we've yeah. got <laughs> at the moment we are working through our space assignments to see okay. how everything fits in and if any additional rooms open up, we will definitely make them available. So keep an eye on out for announcements and we'll also update the uh, the prospectus if anything becomes available. Um, over the next um, few weeks here, we should know more and yeah, if any space becomes available, we'll, right. we'll make it um, available as the MPO. Uh, cool. Um, there's also a question about the virtual platform timing. I don't know if you're like stealing all the thunder from the next meeting, but maybe uh, Tina, if you can do like two sentences on it. I, I know you'll probably talk a lot more about the event in the next meeting. Yes, so for all sponsorship related questions, um, we are working on our sponsor portal that will be out very, very soon within the next few days here that has a lot of information. So I encourage everyone who is currently sponsoring to keep an eye out for that um, and read through that. Lynette, to answer your question about the virtual platform timing, um, at the moment, we are planning um, to align them with the on-site exhibit hours. Um, however, things can always change a little bit. So we will be updating the portal as well if any new information becomes available. Thanks, Tina. Yeah. Um, are there any other questions that people have? 
Um, otherwise, like we're always happy to help answer them. Like you can always reach the events team, you can reach myself, you can reach Christy, you can reach Caitlin, either Slack, email, um, any other way. Um, and hearing none, thanks everyone for coming today. Um, and have a great rest of the week. All right, take care guys. Bye.